Hello, this is Frank with Frank's Beautiful Rocks and Minerals. To see my collection of beautiful rocks and minerals that I have prospected, type in on YouTube, Rock and Mineral Identification, followed by my name, Frank Riser, space, capital M period, capital S period. Riser is spelled R-E-I-S-E-R. -E -E minerals that I have prospected, you will see. And I encourage you to get out there into the field and prospect for your own minerals. Today, I'm going to do some interesting physics demonstrations. So let's get right to it. I have here a stand and lightweight balls surrounding the stand on which is a heavy object. That's the heavy object. I place it on the stand and I lift it up so that the weight, the heavier mass, will cause the balls, the lightweight balls, to rotate. And my question to you is this. How long will that continue to rotate? Surely it should come to a stop after a while. And we'll get back to this after the other demonstrations. The first demonstration is a cylinder rotating on an inclined plane. I have an inclined plane. This is it. It's two pieces of wood about four centimeters tall and it goes to the other side, same piece of wood, about two cent about four centimeters tall, but on top of which, or on the bottom of which, I should say, is a one centimeter high piece of wood to elevate it. You can see its elevation when I lay it down on the bench. Notice, it's inclined. If I put a cylinder on it, just a regular cylinder, it will roll down the inclined plane. I'll give it a tug, get it going. Try that again. One more time for you skeptic viewers. Here I have another cylinder. You can tell it's a cylinder, but this cylinder is a little different in that its center of mass is further away from its axis. It's shaped just like that. Which way will this rotate? I suggest upwards, and I'll put it down at the bottom of the inclined plane, and it, ro it rolls upwards. How could that be happening? Here's another angle. Remember, it's inclined. And surely the, the other cylinder rolls downwards. The answer is this. The center of mass is distributed along the outer part of the uh, of the uh, wider sphere of the cylinder so that when you look at it in this direction because these two pieces of wood are in a v-shaped pattern you'll notice that the center of mass distributed on the outside of the cylinder of this shaped cylinder becomes lower to the bench as it rolls up the two pieces of wood. The center of mass is closer to the bench, this part, the center of mass, this part, right here, is closer, oh, here we are, yep, right here, 
the center mass is closer to the bench than it is here. So it rolls upward. Another physics demonstration. You've seen these in office complexes and in your home. The Newtonian bowl set. What you do is you take one bowl and you release it and the other ball on the other side of the balls bounces outward. Each ball has a mass to it. It has a certain weight in the field of gravity. So when I raise it up, I raise it to a higher state of gravitational potential energy. When I release it, it transfers that energy to the other balls. But why doesn't it transfer the energy and have all these ball moves, have all these balls move. Why is it that only one ball, the outermost ball, moves? Why do not all the balls move? Well, the answer is this. The potential energy is distributed to the other balls quickly in such a fashion where when the ball hits this ball, the energy, and energy is one-half times mass times velocity, and momentum is conserved in this demonstration, where, me where momentum is equal to mass times velocity. When the ball hits, it transfers that energy from one ball to the next, and then to the next, and then, then to the next. But the last ball has no other ball beside it to transfer its energy to so it travels outwards almost as high and it would be as high if we were outside of friction and heat from the system due to being in our atmosphere and producing according to the law of entropy heat which wastes the energy and takes energy out of the system the ball would reach the same height and continue forever but when this ball is moved, why don't all four balls move at the same time? And I leave that for you to contemplate. The next demonstration is the wheel and axle. I have a wheel and axle and I'll describe what it is. There are on a on a um, on a um, on a uh, rod that supports the axle wheel and axle right here that's uh, attached here through the uh, wheel and axle which is free to move is two pulleys on this wheel and axle with strings attached to them one on the larger pulley and one on the smaller pulley. Now I have a balance or a scale rather. This scale measures the grams of force the grams of force by means of a spring at the end of which is a hook so that if you hold a mass on the spring and I'll use my finger and I'll pull down you get a reading on the scale it measures force in newtons or in this case grams grams of force so if I attach the scale to the wheel and axle and pull down on it I read less force needed to move the wheel and axle from the large wheel than the small wheel
the small wheel is harder to pull. It shows more grams of force needing to pull it. What's going on? Well, notice, you don't get something for nothing in physics and science. The wheel that's easier to pull, and you can feel it by hand, is larger. So, you have to take pull it for a greater distance than the smaller wheel. On the other hand, the smaller wheel has a shorter diameter, a shorter radius, but takes so you can pull it, but you'll it turn it makes the outer diameter move a greater distance. So the work here that I'm doing is over a shorter distance, but it is harder to pull. Another demonstration. Oh, well, here's another demonstration of center of gravity. Just related to this demonstration is this little toy. Another demonstration in center of gravity. On this toy is a stand. And on the stand is a weighted ball on a rod on which the other side is a little airplane. So if I place the ball on, if I place the airplane, and this is the pivot point, which can be moved on the rod, if I place that on the stand, it balances perfectly. It balances perfectly. And in this case, the center of mass of the airplane and ball, the ball used as a weight, is such that the entire weight of the airplane and ball can be considered to be zero, except right at the center pivot point of this toy that's where all the weight is that's where all the weight is applied that's where the center of gravity is another demonstration Maxwell's wheel Maxwell's wheel is a cylinder attached to another cylinder similar to the wheel and axis where you wind it up, it's attached to two strings on the outside. Let me wind it up. And right now the wheel and axle is at its highest position. It has high gravitational potential energy. Energy of kinetic translational energy is energy moving down in a straight line. But in the case of the Maxwell's wheel and axle, it has, or Maxwell's wheel, it has on the outer part a rod that which string is attached to. So it will unwind when you release it, causing rotational energy. So the speed at which it drops is slow because the translational kinetic energy is being impeded by the rotational kinetic energy. And watch it go. Notice the kinetic energy changing the potential energy and vice versa. And that will go on and on. And this is Frank with Frank's Beautiful Rocks and Minerals, always reminding you to keep looking down. Oh, I forgot the perpetual wheel of motion. Notice it's still rotating. How could that be? Well, I'll give you the answer. It's not a demonstration in physics. It's a toy where the bottom weight that I called was actually a magnet. And inside the base, you'll notice on the opposite sides, are two uh, cartridges for batteries to be inserted. So this is battery-operated toy where the magnet in there is being rotated by the, the uh, batteries or electromotive force. 
so it's really not rotating on its own it's being pushed pushed by an electromagnet that or elect or a magnet that is rotating inside the base causing this magnet of the perpetual motion demonstration to constantly be re-energized and continue the motion of the toy now I can say this is Frank with Frank's beautiful rocks and minerals always reminding you to keep looking down